Hello. Uh, welcome to Tough Crowd. You know, folks, in the middle of serious economic problems, Congress is once again focusing on useless, feel-good propaganda like the new hate crimes legislation where they will include sexual preference and gender to add extra time onto your sentence. You know, any slick criminal is going to get around this law. I got jumped the other night by some kids. This is true. While they were kicking my ass, the leader handed me a card that said, this gang does not discriminate based on race, ethnicity, <laughs> or sexual preference. We abide by the EEOC and both our gang members and our victims. If you feel you were discriminated against during the commission of this assault, please call this number. You know, the crime's supposed to be less because they tell you not to take it personally. But you know what? That doesn't give you less stitches at the hospital. The amount of time people get in jail should be based on the amount of stitches you gave somebody, okay? Every five stitches in another two years. How is this not a thought crime? All my bits come out eventually. It takes years, but they come out, and that was one. Now listen, uh, Jimmy. By the way, I know you're part German. Have any of this uh, Danish or whatever? Yeah. I know you guys like and that I'm kind of. Too, you, so you like, like that, that kind of stuff, yeah. in the Germanic community. I like you mix tomatoes in there. That's. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 normally goes together. I didn't tomatoes know that. Tomatoes and yeah. cookies. Yeah. Delicious. May, I don't know what that was. Maybe <laughs> symbolic of I don't know. Your half Italian heritage. I am. Yeah, sure. Well, folks, let me tell you something. There are no hate crimes. There are no like crimes. Everything's a hate crime. Would I'd rather be beaten up? because I was white than be murdered by somebody who was my race just because it was a random act, yes? So the point is, can you measure or uh, prove feelings? Greg. Uh, I, I'm torn on this, because on the one hand, there is an Orwellian thought crime element to all this uh, hate crime legislation. On the other hand, I have no problem with hate crime laws if they're used mostly to prosecute black people. <laughs> Todd, I get the feeling you'd like to respond to that. Yeah, that's, that's why we always whooping white people's ass, that yeah. right there. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I really want to whoop Greg's ass right now. I, I believe you. Yeah. yeah, I do. I mean, I, that, I that, is, uh, that is the case with these laws. There's like misperceptions of what the hate crime laws are. But yeah. They're, they're neutral, and that's why I was sort of kidding about the prosecuting I, mostly I'm black people. I'm not back down until now. I'm not even, no, I'm not But the point is that, that they apply equally. So it doesn't say, it doesn't create protected classes. It says if you choose your victim based on their sexual orientation or their race, uh, you know, that you get extra penalties. So it, yeah. it applies across the board. You know what, Todd? Oh, go ahead. So you can potentially be charged for two crimes. If you're, so, right. if you, so actually, if you mug someone, they could call it a hate crime. And really, actually, to avoid that, what you should do probably is announce what your intentions are before you mug someone and say, I'm not mugging you because of your color or your gender or your sexual orientation. You, you get <laughs> mugged because you're Wait in the minute. wrong Wait damn place at the wrong time. Two things. One, did you just steal my monologue? What were you doing? You stole my monologue. You weren't paying attention, Tom. You were not paying Snacks. attention to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly almost to the word what I said in my monologue. <laughs> No, nobody gets a crime. It sounded just me. as good as a second time. God. It sounds better well, when you say I it. I can't hear you. No, I couldn't hear you. Why not? Because you guys you're hear Irish me? and everything sounds well, like you're like speaking I'm another language. You hear me? It's all Todd, like let me tell you something else. Before you start lip Greg, I can't believe you're going to let him get away with that. Right, you certainly weren't out. back in that when it was Dennis Leary. Now tell this son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't want to start a fight. Listen, guys. Here's the bottom line. I guess I should say something after that. But uh, well, I got. Well, they, 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 they what about a crime problem. like rape? Rape is always a hate crime. So why why would that be different? Whoa! Rape is not a hate crime. <laughs> rape is a crime of violence. You don't no. hate somebody you rape, and it is you don't hate somebody you violent with. No, I mean you don't. You're not hating them. It's violence. You're, you're just hating pulling, not having sex with them. Yeah. <laughs> you can't listen. A crime, a crime like rape, assault, any of those things. Those are crimes based on if you do them, you go to jail. There's no extra time because you go. I rape you because you white. Or right. I rape you because you're Puerto Rican. I rape you. Is a, is a crime. Is a, a a hate, is a hate but crime. But it's a good old-fashioned crime, though. Uh. And it's not always against women. Right in prison, they do it to men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they look, and they look right at the black guy, like, yeah, you would know, wouldn't you? Well, all right, in prison, it's a white guy that get rid in prison. Let's face the facts. A white guy, despite every movie, well, then take some the time out classes before you commit crime. Now listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, a man in Idaho was sentenced to seven days for shouting the N-word at a black man who was accosting his wife. 
Now, nigger is an ugly word, but let's face it. In the past 10 years, black culture has used it so widely and openly, and the whites that support that culture want to sing and use the songs. It's a little unnatural for like kids to go. It all started with NWA. They'd have to go to the record store and point out the albums. I want that one. Who's that? You know, the one with Eazy -E, the straight out of Compton. And they can never say the name of the album. Don't you think that it's a little strange to have a word? If, if that's an ugly word, you shouldn't be used, fine. But isn't it a little weird that 10% can use the word and 90% can't, even though it's all over everybody's lyrics and every other shirt? You know what I mean? No, because... Don't you think that's strange? Because they're black. No, this they is get the, to use the word, right? No, this is the actual problem, right? It's like y'all mad because you made the word up and you can't use it no more. <laughs> you abused your privileges when you were using it. <laughs> to, to, That's to, simple. You abused me, your nigger privileges. To me, you have no more nigger privileges. <laughs> to me, the mo first of all, that law in Idaho that you're talking about is unconstitutional. You can't. That's a, that. You can't. You, you can't be disallowed to use certain words. That's just the way it is. But besides that, the most shocking thing about that case was that there are black people in Idaho. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. good point. <laughs> no, the actual, this is what it actually is, why black people do not want you to use the word nigga. One is because we mad at y'all from the stuff y'all did in the past. That's, so we, we figured like, wait a minute, yeah, yeah, we mad at you for the stuff. <laughs> yeah. you, there are some guys, wait, let time, me say this, time. there are some we guys out here that are that. niggas. <laughs> but we don't, as black people, don't indiscriminately walk up to every black person and go, hey nigga, I can't walk up to an old black guy and go, my nigga, without him shooting me, stabbing me or something. But wait a minute, no, you don't walk up there. You don't walk up to every white girl and go, "What's up, cracker? Hey, Wop, what's going on, Mick?" Of course not. But don't act like it's not Hold a gun, Frick. Take it easy with the racial term. I'm yeah. half Italian. I mean, he's half German. <laughs> That's why it's tomatoes and uh, Danish. German Irish. Yeah. Yeah. You know oh, look, we got to get the hell out of here, you guys. But don't worry, Act Two's coming up, and it's going to be quite interesting. <laughs> friends don't leave friends alone with these people. So yeah, you I'm better stay on this. States have adopted anti-bullying policies in an effort to teach kids to how to confront gossiping, ridicule, etc. You know, four eyes, fatty, ugly, smelly, right? Now, what is the downside of this? First of all, less ass in the world. They're teaching kids to open up to the bullies and try and let them know how it feels. Of course, it's not the uh, schoolyard pushdowns anymore. It's you know, sexual assaults by 12-year-olds and like stabbings in the stairwell. You know, kids like, you know, when you emptied your clip into my science class, I felt unsafe. <laughs> so, uh, the question is, is this bad or good? Isn't school supposed to be where we learn how to take a, a little abuse, Jimmy? I, I think it is, yeah. I mean, I, when I was in uh, junior high school, there was a kid named Darren <laughs> And uh, what he would do, he's one Puerto of those Rican. kids. <laughs> no, 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 he's Italian. He was, he was bigger than the, than the rest of us, and he was one of those kids who was comfortable being naked in, uh, you know, and when you're just hoping to get a hair or two. And what he'd do in the locker room is you'd be sitting there by your locker, is it okay if I stand? And he'd put his leg up here, and you're looking that way, like, Todd, you're looking Could that you way. Could you not put your... And then, that's what, this is a valuable lesson to be taught. And then he would call your name with his penis in his hand, and you turn around, and you get a face full of Darren penis. <laughs> but I did learn a valuable lesson from that. I learned not to be impulsive, and I learned that um, penises can sometimes be salty as well. <laughs> you probably, did, could you, you did you put your balls on gray no, we don't the next time anymore. you do this? Yes, yes. I'll leave them in the yeah. green room. Now, well, I, you know what, Colin? Actually, I think this. A lot of kids, too, we got... They raising their kids kind of soft now. Kids, you know, they're getting raised by TV. They don't go outside. They don't play kickball no more. They don't play baseball. They don't play dodgeball. You got all these little fat kids running around eating Jolly Ranchers and Ho-Hos all day, you know, sugar higher than a, you know, a 40-year-old diabetic. And then they sit up, and, and when they go outside, kids tease them, and they can't fight. They can't run. They can't, you know. Get your kids active. Active kids. That's actually human evolution, yeah. though, because uh, now we don't really need, you know, you see kids, they really don't run, they don't do anything, they just sit all day behind a computer, you know, yeah. we're evolving, we're just becoming, eventually we're just going to be a giant ass with fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think, I think fat kids, uh, fat kids should be teased so they don't grow up with a false sense of confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you realize, to, God forbid I get serious, but like, not only the trench coat mafia, but that kid in, in Thomas Jefferson High School in Bed-Stuy, the reason he pulled out a gun was because he was getting bullied by a serious, hard-ass kid. So, I mean, a lot of these shootings are kids that are getting bullied, and they're like, you know, they're just going to go grab a gun and do it. You know what I mean? They're not 
Those kids that are pulling out these but guns. But you know who the crazy kids are in your school. There's no, you know, you know the one that go, you know what, that one. Yeah, the one who, like, in yeah. fourth grade had to go take a pill at a certain time yeah. every day. <laughs> you know That's the, the kid you, you want You know who the nutcases are, the guy, those kids that walk around with the gothic look, you know, and the whole white face paint and the Dracula coat and... You don't go, you, you go, that Why guy is going to kill somebody, you somebody one day. When I was a kid, let's face it, all comedians, let's face it, everybody here caught a couple of nice beatings or we wouldn't become comedians. <laughs> Not me. Now, shut up. Yes, you did. <laughs> now, and then later on, of course, we learned to bully other kids with our big mouths and our sense of ridicule. Now, that may sound harsh, but sorry, not, and this poor man was, gentleman was raped by Joe <laughs> And then he in turn described the rape vividly to me. You. Yeah, that was almost it, a, yeah. putting his scrotum on my <laughs> shoulder. It was almost a symbol. Now everybody on TV going, yeah, well, yeah I, I think saw you when the guy put his balls on your neck. <laughs> That's a good We're one. A celebrity cup. But I think it was yeah, almost a fans. purification ritual yeah. for him, where he got finally cleared. Yeah, something. finally I was able to take it was like a my TV experience movie on Lifetime. and thrust it onto you. And now you've got to do it. You've got to do the same. You can do you know somebody what? in Let the audience. Let me put my balls oh, on. Oh, Jesus! Right. Yeah. 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 Let's make this even. <laughs> all right, listen to this. The black so man's balls. That's all, yeah, I need is, that's all I need is to have Cro Magnon man rest his balls on my shoulder. No. <laughs> listen to me. Now, what about these online things where they caught there? They're spreading rumors, true or false, about the other kids. This one's a slut. This one slept with this one. This teacher's ugly. This is online bullying. What do you think oh, about that? Look, the reality See, is it's okay. cowardly. That's a no, lot of horse. I, I, I do think that's cowardly. And I think, you know, from, I grew up in a, a simpler time when arguments were settled with fists and also love was made that way. With fists. <laughs> <laughs> She's from upstate New York. That's yeah. I, I also think it's just, it is, it's, I feel like it's weak because, like, what would you, you know, like, what are teenagers threatening each other with, like, you know, I, you know, I dare you to look up www.colinquinzaf***.com. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, it's just it's embarrassing. It's like... <laughs> There is me. There is because we didn't have that. We didn't right. have computers to, to go. Hey, you suck online. You right. Know, yeah. but, but there, are, there is a, there is a mean spiritedness to it. That people are cowards. They hide behind. You know, you see on the message boards, people hide behind this anonymity. People are willing to go on a computer and say things yeah. that they wouldn't say in person. You say things you would never say to another person. Like, yes, I would like a thicker, longer penis. Uh, no. well, the other thing is when you get a lot of these. Like, first of all, it's ColinQuinnBlows.com. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I told you not to check it out. Don't oh, check really, it out. I'm gonna you're gonna knock be... that kid out if I ever meet him. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like 11 years old. I'll still stomp him into the ground. <laughs> oh, look, we have to show some commercials. Don't exercise your free will. Just sit there, and we'll be right back. <laughs> you know, folks, Colin Powell, as I call him, Spent the weekend in Israel trying to figure out how to open the roadmap to peace without it blowing out the call window. He had brunch with the prime ministers of Palestine and Israel, and CNN is reporting that when the bill came, Sharon did the fake reach for the wallet. <laughs> now look, the press is always going to the Arab street to find out what's going on. They always go to the Arab street in the Arab countries. What about the Arabs here? The Arab Street here, they're the ones that have to deal with this stuff. So we thought we'd go out and ask some Middle Easterners in this country if they had anything on their minds. Take it to the streets, I always say. So let's check out our first question in my new advice column. Colin, as an Arab in America, sometimes people look at me like suspiciously. Uh, so what should I do to stop this? You get a sweatsuit, some chains, an escalate, and just people will look at you and go, relax, he's not a terrorist, he's just a drug dealer. <laughs> Next. If somebody yells me in the street about Arabic people, about Osama bin Laden, what can I do? So when somebody yells about Arabic people or calls you Osama bin Laden, you know what you do? When they say that, you just go, you know, chinga to madre, then they think you're Puerto Rican. <laughs> then, if they say kill Puerto Ricans, you go Zorba, they think you're a Greek. Then if they say, they say kill Greeks, you go, kill Greeks, I knew you were a Trojan, you scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> Next. So Next, Colin, please. Why many comedians make a joke about the Arab, Arab people? <laughs> the comedians make jokes about Arab people, it means you're accepted as part of the country. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's when they don't joke about you. When they don't joke about you, you gotta worry, okay? Nobody ever made engine jokes in the 1870s. Look what happened to them. <laughs> Next. Colin, it's hard to meet women uh, 
So how can I tell them that I'm a nice guy, not a terrorist? Your first mistake is thinking women want a nice guy. <laughs> they want a bad boy. They want a bad boy. They don't necessarily want a terrorist, but they, it's like a mafia. They don't like the mafia guy, but they want you to be connected. So, like, you bring your girl over to your house, throw out the old uh, playing cards with all the people, and just go, oh, two o'clock, my cousin's crazy. He never learned. <laughs> no, something like that. Next. Where are you going to bomb next so I can tell my cousins? <laughs> That's a fair question, and I'd like to ask you the same one. You tell, and I'll tell. <laughs> next. Colin. Why everybody here you love Israel? Or maybe everybody support Israel? Can you give me an answer? He says, why does everybody here love Israel? Why do you support Israel? Well, it doesn't matter. The point is we've been, you ever, it's like you guys are the Palestinians. You're in a relationship for so long that now if you leave when things are going tough, you look bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Next. Colin, how can I hook up with a girl when they think Islam is oppressive to women? How do you hook up with a girl when they think Islam is oppressive to women? Here's what you do. You get the Quran. You know, you bring her over, you start reading it, and then you show her segments that you put in there, like an E. Cummings poem or Jeff Buckley lyrics, you know? <laughs> Maybe uh, John Mayer, you know? I mean, Body is Wonderland. They, they're going to think that's from the old days, because nobody had the balls to write that after 1950, but apparently. Or you could go for, like, the political girls that want to, like, be bad and piss off dad. They want to get involved with somebody from the Middle East, you know? You tell them some sob story about how corporations, when you were a kid, you knew it, because Dick Cheney pulled up to your village in a Delta 88 Lincoln, you know? And, you know, he slapped the village elders around. Next thing you know, you had the only mosque in the village with a Cinnabon on the side, you know, I don't know. <laughs> You had a Chili's in there, you know, the Baby Max. This is what I'm talking about. Now, see, folks, that's how it's done. You take a problem, you air it out. And remember something. It takes an entire village or a settlement or an occupied territory to raise a child. You know what I mean. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs> something, folks. Racial slurs are taboo, and we are in desperate need of new ones. And who better to create them than tonight's panel of social engineers? So uh, come up with a new derogatory term that describes any group of people. Jimmy? Well, first of all, I want to say, uh, I, I'm so glad you're finally tackling race on this program. <laughs> <laughs> My group uh, is midgets. The hardest time I have with midgets, uh, they don't seem to like anything you call them. You know, They really aren't happy with anything. And when they complain, they have high, squeaky voices that give you a headache. Um, I've given this a lot of thought. I'm sensitive to the fact that they want to be called what they want to be called. So I made a huge list, and I narrowed it down to uh, uh, three names. Uh, they can be called humanettes, uh, <laughs> halfies, and, um, and or people McNuggets. <laughs> you make the choice, guys. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Laura Keitlinger. <laughs> you want to sit on my lap? No, I want you to have the whole because of the right. joke. Okay, first of all, I resent being forced to come up with a sniglet. Ow. Yeah. Uh, but here goes. Titwit. <laughs> it's the tit-shaped candy in a bright pink box. No, titwits are those guys that don't make eye contact while they're talking to you because they're too busy staring at your boobs. <laughs> and when you catch them, they ask... What did your shirt say? <laughs> says, I know you're staring at my chest, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Great. Just made it a fun bit. It was great. Okay, Todd Lynn. Yeah, I personally like the slurs we have right now. Why make up something that means the same thing as nigga or redneck or wop? I like to know when I'm insulted. Heel nigga, black cracker, chink billy, none of these have the same effect as the good old slurs. I feel like if you want to call somebody a racial slur, do it. Just remember there's going to be either unemployment or a big ass whooping, depending on who you say it to. All right. I like those three, though. Hey, chink billy. Greg Giraldo. Uh, I sat next to a guy in the subway uh, yesterday who smelled like a decomposing flounder. I'd, I'd like to call him and people like him bass holes. <laughs> All, all 
Also, there seems to have been a wave of Asian guys acting like real pricks recently. From that psycho in North Korea to health officials in China to the kids who killed that bouncer here in New York, we should call these guys walk suckers. <laughs> As in, hey, I got no problem with Asian people, I just don't like walk suckers. <laughs> Listen, most Asians are all right, like Mr. Miyagi, he's cool, but, uh, but Ho Chi Minh, he was a real walk sucker. Okay. There you go. I guess we could have stopped early for that. <laughs> now we'll go to me, and then I'll later. All right. Mine would be, uh, for whites, you call them men without hops. <laughs> Wait, Colin, let me try that. Okay, ready? Uh, all right. Uh, for whites? Let's just call them men without hops. Black. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> for, bla for blacks, the movie ruiners. <laughs> Latin Latinos, Generation Mex. <laughs> and the Asians, the tech supporters. <laughs> wow. You know what, folks? <laughs> If we manage to not offend anybody, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>